Hey team, we're gonna learn how we can make a GraphQL query to grab our GitHub pinned repositories and add them to a Next.js React app. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and the little notification bell for future updates. If you're not familiar with the idea of a pinned repository, if you head to pretty much any GitHub profile that's taking advantage of it, we have the ability to add these pinned repositories to our GitHub profile where I can feature whatever projects I want and I can even customize that. I can rearrange it and I have the ability to add up to six repositories to be featured on my page. Now this is a really great way to customize my GitHub profile, but what if I wanted to add it to say my personal website, where here, if I scroll down, maybe I wanted to add it along with my featured projects to show what the open source software I'm working with is. And if I wanted to do that right now, I would have to use some kind of custom infrastructure where instead, maybe I can just simply use these pinned repositories. So to do that, we're going to take advantage of the GitHub GraphQL API, where we can make requests to this API and grab all of our pin repositories so we can add them wherever we want within our project. And this isn't just for getting the pin repositories, we have a ton of data available to us. So whether you wanna grab the pin repositories, what we're gonna do here, or if you wanna grab some other information about GitHub, we have a lot of options available inside of this API. But to test this out, we're going to use Next.js, which is a React framework that's going to allow us to really quickly spin up a React application where we can start playing around with these requests. In order to make the GraphQL query itself, we're gonna use the Apollo client, which is an easy install with NPM. But to get started, we're going to use Create Next App, which is a really easy way to just simply spin up a new application. So inside of my terminal, I'm gonna run yarn create next app and I'm going to call this my pinned repos and you can use npx if you'd like or whatever you prefer for actually managing getting a new project started on your local environment but once that's done next.js would have cloned down an example project where we can now cd into that directory and they would have also installed all the dependencies needed to actually bootstrap a new application so we can simply run yarn dev or npm run dev where we can now open that up inside of our browser and once Next.js actually compiles the application for the first time and loads it up on the web development server, we're going to be able to see that we have a new sample application available right inside of our browser. So now before we go any further, there's one important thing that we're going to need in order to make requests to the GitHub API, and that's going to be a personal access token. So if I head back over to GitHub, I'm gonna navigate over to my profile drop down here, and I'm going to navigate to settings. Once I'm on the settings page, I'm going to scroll down over to developer settings, where then I'm going to select personal access tokens. And we can see that I already have some tokens here available, but I want to create a new token. So I'm going to click this generate new token button. And we can see here that it brings up our new personal access token page where I can put in a note and maybe I want to say pinned repositories. That way I have a little bit of an idea for what this is going to be for. Maybe you want to use your website name if it's going to be used for other requests, but ultimately you want to note so you remember exactly what this access token is for. Additionally, we can set an expiration date where this is going to say that we want this token to expire after a certain period of time, where I'm just going to set mine to no expiration because I know that I'm not going to be sharing this with anybody. But we can see here GitHub even warns us that this is going to be a token that lives forever. And it is definitely recommended to set expiration dates from a security perspective. So keep that in mind when you're actually doing this. But I know that I'm going to be deleting this after the tutorial. But as we scroll down, we want to make sure that we are able to give it the scopes that we want so that when we make a request, we have access to actually request those resources. And we're going to select two things. First of all, we're going to select this public repo where I'm going to go ahead and check check that. And then when I scroll down, I also want to go to user and I want to select read user. And then once I'm done, I can simply click generate token. And once the page reloads, we can now see that I have my brand new token. Now, this is the only time you're going to be able to see this token. So you want to make sure you copy it and you place it somewhere important. And in our case, we're going to use this to create an environment variable. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal and open up my code editor, where what we're going to do is inside the root of the project, we're going to create a new file called .env.local, which is going to be where we're going to store an environment variable. And I'm going to call this GitHub access token and I'm going to set that equal to that key that I just copied from GitHub. So what's going to happen is when we load up our Next.js application, it's going to find this access key and it's going to load it into the process so that we can use it to make queries. So now that we have our access token, we ultimately want to make a request with it to the GitHub API. 
And like I mentioned before, we're going to use the Apollo client. So here I'm going to install these dependencies, just like it says, where we have our Apollo client in GraphQL. If I head over to my terminal, I'm going to run yarn, add those two dependencies for Apollo client and GraphQL, and it's going to go ahead and install those into the project. But once that's done, those are going to be the only dependencies that we're going to need. So I'm going to start back up my development server. And now, as we can see inside of the documentation, we want to now initialize our Apollo client. So that includes two things. Importantly, we need to import our different functions that we're going to use, and we need to set up a new instance of the Apollo client. To make things easier, I'm going to simply copy and paste these values and tweak them as we need them. But I'm going to put this URL in the description. That way you can follow along exactly how I am right here. So I'm going to copy that and head over to my editor. I'm going to go to pages index.js, which is going to be our home page. And at the top of that, I'm going to import those dependencies. And for our purposes, we're only going to need the Apollo client and in memory cache and GQL. So I'm going to get rid of Apollo provider and use query as those are important. If you're going to make requests on the client where we're going to use a data fetching method in Next.js called get static props, where we're going to do that on the server during compilation so that we don't need to worry about making the request inside of the browser. So now to actually set up that data fetching method, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and I'm going to export a new async function called get static props. Now inside of get static props, I'm ultimately going to want to return an object with a property called props, which is going to be the props that we're going to pass into our React application. And this is where we're going to fetch the data using GraphQL. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this client over back into my get static props function. And this is going to be my first instance of the Apollo client. Now, the next important thing is the URI, which we're going to update in a second, but we want to add a way so that we can add authentication to this request. So to do that, we're going to follow along with the documentation on Apollo for how we can actually add authentication. And if we see here, we have two methods that they provide with a cookie method and a header method. We want to click down to the header method as we want to see, we're going to need to create an HTTP link, which this is going to be the mechanism where we actually store our endpoint. And then with that HTTP link, we need to also create an auth link using the set context method, which is going to allow us to set that authorization header, which is where we're going to put that access token that we generated as an environment variable. So to start, I'm going to copy a lot of this in just like I did in the last example. So I'm going to include this URL inside of the description. But the first thing we need is this additional uh, imports. So the first thing is create HTTP link. So if I head over back to my page, I'm going to first add that HTTP create HTTP link import for the Apollo client. But we also need to grab this set context as the secondary import. Next, I'm going to grab this entire snippet and head back over where at the bottom of my homepage, I'm going to replace that client instance. And we can see now that it's a very similar way to actually create that new Apollo client instance. But instead of actually applying the URI directly to the client, we're creating this link, which is where we're applying our endpoint along with the authorization. Now, this particular example uses local storage, and that's something that's really handy if maybe you're on a browser and you're able to get that value so that you can store some authentication. But we're not doing it that way. We're doing this on the server. So we can actually get rid of all that local storage information. And instead, what we're going to do is additionally get rid of this uh, ternary statement. And we're going to say instead of this token, we're going to pass in process.env. And we're going to go back to our environment variable file and we're going to paste in that GitHub access token. So when this file loads, it's going to grab that value and pass it in as the access token for us to make the request. Now, finally, one last thing to actually get this client set up is passing in the correct URI. Now, yet another link for documentation is on the GitHub docs where we want to form a call with GraphQL, where if I scroll down here, we can find that GraphQL endpoint, which is simply going to be api.github.com slash GraphQL. So I'm going to take that value and I'm going to paste it right in inside of the URI field so that we can now make that request. So now that we have our GraphQL client, we can finally make the query. Now, the cool thing that I showed you a little bit earlier is we have this GitHub GraphQL API Explorer where we can really see all the data that's available to us. But what we particularly want to do is we want to scroll down to the user field, which we're going to open up as soon as I find it again. And in the login field, we're going to add Colby Fayok or whatever your GitHub username is that you want to actually make this query for. 
but then we can scroll down and we can see that we're going to have a field that's called pinned items. And inside of that, we're going to be able to see things like the total count, which if we hit play, we can see that I now have six pinned items on my profile, which is exactly correct. But now we can also hit edges and we can hit node and we're going to be able to select the repository so we can actually get details about each of the repositories, such as the ID that I have selected here. And it looks like we already have the name selected, but these are going to allow us to actually add this data from the repository right inside of our application. Now, if you're a GraphQL noob like me, we see that we actually are getting an error. And what we need to do is we, as it says here, we need to provide a first or last value to paginate these pinned items. And to do that, what we're going to do is right inside of this actual query, if I can click inside of it correctly, we're going to pass in kind of similar to a function. We're going to pass in first and we're going to say six, which is going to be to get the first six items, which in our case is all the items. But now I can hit play and we can see that I have all the repositories that I have pinned inside of my GitHub profile. Now, before we move on, I have one more thing that I want to get. And if we look under this stargazers field, we can actually see that we have stargazer count. Or if I hit play on that, we can see the amount of stars that each of these projects actually have, which is a nice little feature that we can add on our project page. But now I'm literally going to copy this entire query and I'm going to head back over to my app where underneath the client, I'm going to say, I want to await client.query where I'm going to create a new object where I can add that query where I'm going to use that GQL tag and I'm going to paste in my GraphQL query right inside of that tag. Now I want to grab that value so I'm going to create a new constant and I'm going to actually destructure the data property from this query because I know already that that's going to come back as one of the properties. But now to test this out let's go ahead and console log out that data object. Now, if I reload the page, we won't see anything happen at this point, and we won't see anything happen inside of our web console either, because we're currently making that request on node when the app is getting compiled. So instead, we wanna head over to our terminal where we can see that we're passing in that data object where we have our user and we have our pinned items exactly how we were expecting. So now I'm gonna further destructure this where I'm gonna say I want my constant user to come from my data, and I'm gonna say constant pinned items is equal to my user, where I'm gonna say that I wanna grab the pinned items from that user, but I also wanna map through each of the edges. And for each of those edges, we ultimately have a node that we wanna grab. And I'm going to pass that back so that we just have a clean data set when we're passing this into our application. But now I'm going to replace this data console log statement so we can see what this looks like. But again, if I refresh the page and now look in the terminal, we can see all of my repository data right inside of my terminal. So now that we have our pinned items, we need to add it into our actual React application. So I'm gonna simply take this pinned items constant, get rid of that console log, and I'm gonna paste it in this props object, which is going to turn it into a React prop. So now at the top of my page, inside of this home component function, I'm going to add that as a new destructured prop that's going to get passed into my application. And to test this out yet again, let's log that out. But now if after I refresh the page, we can see that we have all that data right inside of our browser. So now all that's left is to actually render it inside of our application. So to do that inside of my Next.js default application, I'm going to take advantage of this existing grid and these cards that are already available. That way I don't need to create any special UI just for this particular walkthrough example. So I'm gonna get rid of all of those and then I'm going to create a new pinned items map statement where I'm going to say for each item, I'm going to create a new return statement. And in that return statement, I'm going to pass in this card value so I can dynamically create each one. But inside, I'm going to say that instead of this URL, I'm going to pass in the item.url where I'm going to leave that same class name. But because we're in React, we want to make sure that we add a key to each one of these dynamic, uh, dynamically mapped values. So I'm going to add key is equal to item.id, but then instead of the h2, let's add our item.name. And how about instead of this paragraph, let's add a star emoji. Let's find that in there. And I'm gonna say that I want it to be item.stargazers, and hopefully that is the right spelling. But now if we look inside of our application, we can already see all these cards and they're all linked to my repository. Now I did slightly get that stargazer count wrong and it looks like it is stargazer count. But if I head over to my code again and I just simply replace that property, we can see we now have all the stargazer counts. 
While this is a simple example of how we can take advantage of the GitHub GraphQL API, it's a neat way for us to be able to show off our favorite open source projects on our own personal websites while not having to manage some kind of custom CMS option for those different repositories. The great thing is now that we are actually authenticated and we can make requests to the API, we have a ton of different options available for us for what we can do with that API. Whether we wanna automate some tasks for our team's workflow or just something general to add more fun things about our open source work on our personal website. With all the hard work that we're doing on GitHub, we wanna have a good way to be able to query all of that data that, and make it available for all of our different projects. And being able to use the GitHub GraphQL API is a great way to be able to obtain all of that information. What's your favorite use case of the GitHub GraphQL API? Or is there a different GraphQL API that you really enjoy? Let me know in the comments. If you want another example of how you can query GraphQL in a Next.js app, I have this example in this other video where you can query the SpaceX GraphQL API to get all of their launches. Or if you want to learn how to take that dynamic data and create dynamic meta tags for your SEO, check out my next video for React SEO with Next.js. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and click subscribe and that little notification bell for future updates. Thanks for watching.